Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. Look, you are already better at building Copilot Studio custom agents than you realize. Why? Because Copilot Studio is part of the Microsoft Power Platform. Yeah, we probably knew that. And part of that being in the platform means that we also get to bring our skills. Right? Have you ever written a formula in Power Apps? That's called Power FX. That is all over the place here in Copilot Studio. Have you ever written a flow? Right? Have you ever built a cloud flow to do any type of automation? Very simple, very complex, doesn't matter. Guess what? We use Cloudflow in several different ways inside of Copilot Studio. So much so that now there's even a special type of agent flow that uses our flow skills and AI prompts in a wonderful combination to build more structured agents along the way. And then of course there's the connectors. You know, the Power Platform is famous for having like 1500 plus connectors. That number's probably changed since the last time I looked it up, but lots of them. Guess what? All of those connectors, all those actions, all those things you already know how to use, they surface themselves in Copilot Studio agents as well. And finally, our dear friend, just logic, right? Our brains. We've spent the last few years building Power Apps and Cloud Flows to make our business solutions better. And yes, there's a technical component to it, but one of the great things about low code, no code is it is really a focus on using those tools and your business knowledge, how you understand your processes and all of that is what really goes into making successful apps and flows. Guess what is also goes into making successful custom agents in Copilot Studio? That's right, your business logic. So let's jump over to my desktop and just look at a couple of quick examples of where you're going to do this. But throughout the course, we are going to put these in there, right? Because in the demos and the hands-on, you're going to have to use your Power Apps and Power Automate skills along the way. But I just want to give you a little flavor of what those are. All right, I'll switch over to my desktop. All right, let's start over here with our demo IT support assistant agent, right? You're gonna to learn to build this one later, but for right now, I just wanna use it to show you an example. So here in the topics, I have a topic to facilitate new computer requests. And so the first thing that happens in that topic is a user chooses they want a desktop or a laptop, and we store that in a variable. Have you used variables before? I bet you have. And so once we store that in a variable, we're then going to run a plugin action to get the item's devices. So what that means is we're gonna use one of our the same actions that we use in Power Apps and Power Automate, but we're gonna pass it an OData query that we're gonna write with Power FX using the variable from above, all to stitch it together to get us the results back, and then we're gonna store that in a table variable, okay? So then we scroll down here, and so this is the first place I wanna show you the Power FX. So I asked the question, which device are you interested in? And I wanna give them the list of options that came back from this action. The challenge here is that the data that came back wasn't the way that it wanted. It needed to be reshaped. So I clicked right here and look at this formula. So I took the table variable global var list of devices and I used show columns. Show columns is one of your power FX data shaping columns. And all it does is says, hey, take the table and it only give me the columns back I say, in this case, just the title column. So just return the single column, then rename the title column to value. Okay, so then that makes a list of the computers in a single column table. What else do you know that really likes single column tables? Maybe drop downs, right? Like we've done this before. We've had to shape our data to get it to be the way we want in order to facilitate our Power Apps working. So here I just use my Power Apps, Power FX skills to create exactly what we needed here. And so throughout this demo, when you see it, and then you get to do step by step where I show you how to build all this, you're gonna see that we have all of these Power FX formulas along the way. We do a really complicated one over in adaptive cards with concat, inserting our dynamic text from a table into the middle of a JSON of adaptive cards. Oh, I've heard of those as well. I use those with teams all the time. So very common skill sets for us. Now let's hit cancel here. Let's back up a little bit. So remember I told you here that this takes this variable and write a power FX. So how does that work? Well, if we go to actions, we're gonna look for get item devices, right? There's the name. So there's get item devices. And remember, this is just one of the 1500 connectors that you're used to using in Power Platform. We're just using it over in Copilot Studio. Same exact inputs, outputs. And we're gonna learn about it more later. But if we go here to inputs and we scroll down here, look, there's a filter query, right? We do those in Flow all the time, OData filters. And so I need to create that on the fly. So if we click on the little arrow here, all it is is string concatenation, right? Asset tag EQ, single quote. 
ampersand combine global var asset type that variable and then another single quote at the end. That was it. But this was how I was able to say, hey, use this particular OData query to get back the exact devices they want based on their selection. So that's what you're going to see throughout the tool is there's just all these places where our little power FX just sneaks in, helps us write a little logic that makes our custom agent work more correctly because we're not making say, hey, custom agent, figure this out for yourself. We're saying run this formula. It'll output exact outcome you want. And there's other places this stuff shows up, but I just want to kind of get you excited. We have a whole module on this. Plus, you're going to learn to build everything you're seeing here a little bit later. All right, then we have flows. So let's switch over to the other agent that we're going to demo. So this is the incident report triage custom agent, right? This one's going to be an autonomous agent, one that runs on its own. If you look over here under actions, look, there's a little flow symbol. And so we have a flow that is running here. So we click into there and then over here on the right, we can just click here and watch. It is going to open us up into Power Automate, right? Like nothing special. This is Power Automate Cloud Flows. We say edit very much the same way when you write a Power Apps flow, we're going to write a Copilot Studio flow. So we have a trigger, which is going to be taking inputs from the agent, pass them in to do some actions, and then we're going to respond back to our agent with information as well. What we do here in the middle, 100% up to you. Everything you know how to do inside of Flow can be done here. So if you want to have switch statements, you want to have multiple approvals, you want to have big, giant, gnarly conditions all over the place, or just a real simple one like this, it doesn't matter. Everything that you know how to do in Cloud Flows can be done here. Also, you can see here that I'm doing create text with GPT using a prompt. So if we click on that, so what we're doing in this example is we're going to take an image from my incident report, we're going to store it in Dataverse, so we're retrieving that from Dataverse, handing that to this prompt, and this prompt, if we click on edit, it's just running our prompt against that image to get us the outcome, right? To tell us what happened in the incident photo so that the agent can better decide how to triage the situation, right? There is nothing specific about Copilot Studio here. These are all skills that you have today from the Power Platform. We're just using them to augment our agent. So you're not, you don't have to learn anything new. This is all, all the same stuff. All right, so let's close all this up. So now back over here on agent, Let's go back here to overview. So another thing that's important to understand is that your autonomous agents, right? They need to be triggered when business data changes, whether it's changes into SAP or Dataverse or SharePoint or new email or team messages or any of the other different triggers that our flows can accept today. All of those can trigger an agent to do its job. So if we go down here to triggers, we can see that we have one. And if we just click the ellipses, edit and power automate. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not even mention it. Like you see, and when we get over here. Like this is just a flow. So when an item is updated in Dataverse, like we've always done, and once again, this could be any of your data sources. Any trigger that runs in CloudFlows can trigger a Copilot Studio agent to run. So when something triggers here, it does and sends over to the agent. Hey, agent, time to do your job. And here's the information, and we're just passing dynamic content from our flow over to the agent. Bingo, bango, they have got all the pieces available to them. Also, as you look at this, like this flow could be very complicated. It doesn't have to just trigger and send. It could trigger, do 27 different things that you want to do, and then take all that and send it over as well. So you have a lot of control of how this goes. I'm going to switch back over again. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk to you about over here is literally hot off the presses. Like, I don't even have full access to it yet. That's how brand new it is. But we now have this thing called agent flows. Sometimes I want to build an agent, but I want it to be very structured, right? The agents that we build in this course are both free thinking, right? Like, they have all the pieces. We've given them instructions. We've given them the pieces. But how they piece them together and solve the problems, we leave up in a lot of ways to the agent to determine using the large language model, right? That brain. That doesn't have to be the case here. In the case of agent flow, and I'm going to switch over to a demo that Microsoft's already recorded, so we're going to kind of use that to show you what they're doing here. But agent flows is an interface where you come into Copilot Studio, you use your words to build a flow, and then once you've built that flow, you can then take advantage of the power of AI to ingest the data, make decisions on the data, and then route it. The difference being is that when you do it in an agent flow, it is a much more structured, rigid conversation, right? When we do it in a custom agent, custom agents can kind of jump and do what they feel is best based on the guidance you've given them. 
And in agent flow, it is just bang, 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 just like every other flow you've ever written, right? Flows don't just jump around, they just follow the steps in order. The same thing's going to be true with agent flows. Okay, so hopefully that gets you excited, gets you going on the ideas that are possible, right? Like everything we're doing here is not net new. Most of it is skills you have just being applied different ways along the way. So speaking of them being applied, next up, I'm gonna walk you through two different demos. I'm gonna show you that conversational agent end to end, how it works, all the things it does. So you can be interested in that. Then we're gonna do the same thing for our autonomous agent here. So you can see how that works end to end. And then I don't want you watching these videos going, well, that's great. Like, yeah, I'm sure Shane built those, right? Smoke mirrors, uh-uh. So after we get done with all the different demos, then I am going to walk you step by step by step by step by step through building both that conversational agent and that autonomous agent. Every little piece, every little piece of power FX, every flow, every AI prompt, all of that, I'm gonna walk you through how to build together so that way you can build it yourself and you can understand how it works. And it's a nice mixture of beginner intro content and a bunch of little like, hey, here's a complex thing that even my seasoned pros probably didn't know. So then that way we all can learn no matter where we're at on the journey. All right, that's enough of this. Let's jump over to the next video.